Lucha lovers, Hutch Henry's honor to be here as Lucha Libre comes to Toronto. It's chapter one, and our good friends over at House of Glory Hog invades Hogtown, chapter one, and oh! <laughs> it's an opportunity, Knox, five-way scramble, and everybody here all over the one competitor from Hog, House of Glory, Nick Lockhart. Wow, look at them all go. Everybody in this match pretty much is a rookie in the industry. Opportunity Knox, the winner of this match, gonna get a permanent spot on the Lucha Toronto roster. And there we go, center of the ring, Idris Abraham. Calling him a rookie is a little bit of a stretch. This guy, the biggest guy in the match, even a little bit bigger than Lockhart, and certainly the most experienced, with the exception of his opponent in the ring right now, Aiden Prince, these two guys. Whoa, I think it's a lock that one of these two guys are gonna be a member of our permanent roster, and hopefully Chapter two, chapter three, oh, chapter four. Hopefully we're gonna have a lot more of Lucha Toronto coming for you. Thank you so much for supporting us here. Currently in the ring, Isaiah Cassidy, oh, taking a big shot to the stomach there from Carter Mason, local Toronto boy here, doing very well for himself locally. I think there's a great future for Mason. Isaiah Cassidy, I do not, whoa, know much about this kid, except I know he's obviously very agile. Uh, not been in the industry very long, but I'm hearing some good things. And there is Idris Abraham going to town on the rookie Cassidy. Wham, knife edge chop. I am looking forward to seeing this guy on the roster some more. Hopefully he can come out with a victory. Big standing drop kick. The halal beefcake himself. Opening match here, chapter one. Putting it on display for the fans and setting up the rookie. Wow, big falling headbutt. Lots of hair gonna give some extra weight to that. We go, Aiden Prince. I don't know tons about Prince. I think he's from the Windsor area. Somebody's gonna tell me I'm wrong about that, but this kid probably second place to Idris Abraham here as far as experience. Whoa, big drop kick of his own right to the mush. In from behind, Carter Mason. Up and over Aiden Prince now. Hard are breaking through. I was wondering what was gonna happen there, but Prince bounces him off. Oh, big knee, right to the face. Prince to the opposite side. Now oh, Mason eating an elbow. Showing the inexperience there at a second time for sure. Oh no. Wow, spoke a little too soon, catching Prince and destroying him with a big neck breaker there. Wow, and here comes Nick Lockhart, just throwing off Mason like a flea. Oh, and turning Prince inside out. Everybody obviously very wise to get on top of this guy from the beginning. A real powerhouse, this Nick Lockhart coming to us from our, oh, our friends at House of Glory Wrestling. This entire event is gonna be Toronto against Hog. Hog invades Hogtown, and Nick Lockhart is having some trouble with all the local boys here, that's for darn sure. Gonna try and power through here. Lockhart's got this locked. Wow! He has been displaying some serious power this entire match. Seems to take a little bit of that suplex himself though, a little bit winded. Not in exactly the same shape as some of these other guys. A little round in the belly there. Probably needs to work on his cardio and this guy might be a serious force to reckon with in the wrestling industry. Oh, super kick! Triple super kick! Lockhart all the way to the outside, and Abraham going to work here on Aiden Prince. These two guys have certainly been leading this match. Oh, as far as I'm concerned, wow. Abraham got an elbow there too, but Aiden Prince nearly broken in half by Idris Abraham, and a double super kick. There we go, let's see that again. Wham, double super kick there from Cassidy and Mason, and all five guys slayed out here. Cassidy, what's he doing? Out onto Lockhart, I thought he was gonna catch him there. Here comes Mason. Ah, oh, Tope Suicida through the middle ropes, taking out both guys, and he's fired up and he's trying to get these fans fired up. Lucha Toronto chapter one coming at you folks. And speaking of coming at you, here comes Aiden Prince, ducking. Oh, big slap right to the mush. Quick like a cat. Oh, wow. Aiden Prince taking everybody out, but I think he went face first right down. No, oh, he's recovered a little bit there. 
But man, that could not have felt good. And obviously not popping up to his feet the way a man usually would after administering a move. Took himself out. But speaking about getting taken out. Tope Khan Hilo from Idris Abraham. Impressive stuff from a guy with that kind of size. And look at Mason. Totally folded in half here. Oh, wow. Wow, I, Lockhart looks like he just totally waffled Abraham. And maybe showing the inexperience here. I think he doesn't know what he's gonna do. Oh no, looks like I'm wrong. Looks like he might know exactly what he's gonna do. Don't tell me this big man's gonna fly. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, okay. <laughs> Still, that's a lot of body weight to come crashing down on you. Double axe handle. Lockhart seems pleased with himself, getting a good fan reaction there. Now, I think the two biggest rookies now in the ring. Cross body getting him nowhere. Cassidy might have be regretting this one. Wow, oh, big Celtic cross. Wow, oh, Duck and Aiden Prince. Lockhart. Belying his inexperience here. Oh no, double stomp. I like this Nick Lockhart kid. Idris Abraham though, in the ring, breaking it up. Looking to take the victory here. Opportunity Knox is gonna become a permanent member of the Lucha Tio roster. Into the side, Aiden Prince showing the speed. I called it from the start, one of these two guys. You're gonna see them on a regular basis. Oh no, wow. Blue Thunder Bomb picking him right out of midair. And Isaiah Cassidy breaking that one up. It could have been all over for Aiden Prince. Peppering him with some forearms now. Cassidy, what's he gonna do? Well, he's gonna get reversed. That's what he's gonna do. Oh no! Wow, look at that ace crusher. Almost completely vertical. Snatching Idris Abraham's head out of midair and driving him to the canvas. I think the only thing that broke that up was Carter Mason, who's looking to break the job. Isaiah Cassidy here, a couple of lifters, and look at these forearms. Wow, oh, Cassidy showing that he's fully aware of what's going on. Again with another springboard, a little too often with this young man. He's gonna have to learn to keep that in his pocket. Wow, oh, running, shining wizard. Nobody there to break it up, it's over! Wow, and that was the story of this match, the breakup. Nobody there to break up the pin that time, and Carter Mason comes out with a spot on the Lucha T.O. roster. All right, a disappointed Nick Lockhart, and not the only one, I'm sure, but Carter Mason, you'll be seeing him here in the future. Aiden Prince, a little bit dejected and you can't blame him. We'll be back, Parejas action coming at you. Two of the best tag teams in Ontario. Here we go, folks, Parejas action. The Super Smash Brothers taking on fight or flight. Von Vertigo side headlock on Stu Grayson. This is gonna be some excellent action here. Wow, the young Vertigo really locked in there in behind Hammerlock to a waist lock. And Grayson, probably superior upper body strength, he's gonna try and pull that apart and finally successful. So, oh, wow. I was gonna say some good old fashioned wrestling action, but spoke a little too soon as Grayson spiked him with the elbow side of the head. But now a headlock of his own. Vertigo gonna try and power out here in behind, back to that side headlock. Good stuff. Far side, Grayson gonna break out of that easy. 
Windmilling. And look at this right from the start. Pat Vertigo making it look easy. Ow. Grayson also making it look easy, taking out one half of the former Candy Kids, Von Vertigo, and his partner, Gabriel Fuerza. These guys have been around all the way since the final days of Squared Circle Live. Wow, Grayson talking trash to Gabriel Fuerza, now known as Fight or Flight, and these guys are getting a reputation all across Canada as one heck of a high-flying duo. Grayson, though, obviously a member of the Super Smash Brothers. There's the tag to Fuerza. These guys are no strangers Whoa, oh, to tag team action and to taking out opponents just like that big running kitchen sink, and Fuerza gets nothing right off the top. There we go, big leg drop, probably the most vicious man in this match, player Uno for Narcher. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. This guy loves administering punishment to people. Even on his happiest, most jovial days, you'll see him dishing it out a little bit harder. He really likes what he does for a living. Grayson, nice helo there. Firm control over Gabriel Fuerza, who got the tag in, but got nothing done, and wow! Look at that flying elbow, almost a cross body, really digging in. Grayson saying, no problem, all right. I'll just do it some more if I gotta. Classic tag team boot in the corner, and here comes player Uno one more time. Full Nelson, Fuerza's going nowhere. Wow, and big double chop, open-handed, right to the esophagus. That's gonna take the wind right out of you. And look at Uno, with that sick, twisted mind I was talking about. Loves to dish out punishment, loves to humiliate opponents. Oh, wow, and loves to do things right. Just like that suplex, snap suplex, center of the ring. Center of the ring, and devastating to boot. Wow, DiBiase, fallen punch there. Let's get another look at that snap suplex. Check it out. Wham! That's how you deliver a snap suplex, folks. Where's a trying to get something going on here against the bigger man? Oh, headbutt. Absolutely brutal. Top of the head, too. Now, where's a. Oh, digging it in. Final cut style elbow. Driving down Uno. And this kid's going to have to roll over to the corner. Come on, get his win back. Vertigo waiting for the tag. Where's a sucking win? He's at his midsection, worked over the entire time he's been in the ring from the very first moment, and again! Fight or flight, they cannot get anything going on here. Another tag, and running right into a big boot from player Uno. Now in the far corner, Stu Grayson tagged in. Oh, and the same scenario, working on the midsection of Von Vertigo. These guys got a plan, and their plan is attack and destroy. They have not let up on fight or flight from the get-go. Grayson saying, come on, bring it. Catching Vertigo. Wow, big Uranagi center of the ring. And these guys are making it look easy against fight or flight. Grayson shaking it off there. And I'm all right. Nah, it's no big deal. I think I might have tweaked the shoulder there as I was, uh, you know, kicking the shit out of this kid. But, you know, no big deal. Fans trying to get behind fight or flight. On Vertigo into the far corner. And Vertigo has not built up the muscle mass yet in his career to take that kind of punishment. Running shoulder block in the corner, hitting his head, his back, everything. And now a big kick as well. Stu Grayson in firm control here. Look, this ragdoll and Vertigo to the corner saying, you want some, Uno? All right, here, you can take it now. These guys making it look easy, and it's real sad, unfortunately. Wow. Firm control. That's what it's all about, and see? Mocking Gabriel Fuerza. Stu Grayson may be a vicious competitor, but nowhere near as duplicitous, devious, and all around sick and twisted as his partner, player Uno. And look at Vertigo here, peppering him. Oh, and again, running into a back elbow. Breaking the eyes, player Uno. Just 
that little extra twisted edge to all of his offense. Wow, snapping this time the butterfly style suplex. Here's another look at that suplex. Wham! Absolutely brutal and following through. Back to live action in the corner of Vertigo. <laughs> Just getting mauled by Uno. Uno's mask coming undone, unfortunately getting tangled up a little bit here and there. That might be the only advantage that Vertigo's gonna get. Here we go. Maybe even the few moments that Uno took to deal with that. The kid is taking every advantage he can. Uno down now from that twisting Insegiri. Vertigo crawling for the corner. The fans and Snoop Racer get in the ring. Come on. That's totally unnecessary. You guys have been in firm control the whole time. Give these kids at least a fighting chance. And Vertigo, oh, out of the way of Uno, taking care of both guys. They're jumping over. Ah, oh, big kick out there. Stu Grayson, stupefied, if you will. DDT from his own partner. Impressive stuff. And Fuerza in the corner, obviously dying to get that tag. Look at this action here. Wham! Absolutely brutal. Back to live action and Vertigo trying desperately. There's the tag to Fuerza. Let's see if he can make something out of this. Oh, and finally, jumping forearm underneath Uno. And again, these guys have finally got it down. Didn't fall for it this time. Didn't take an elbow to the face. But Uno taking some drop kicks. Gabriel Fuerza on fire. Big step up in Sagiri in the corner. What's he doing? Trying for the slice bread? No. Ducking under, big kick to the gut. Where's that look at the agility? Huge moonsault, could be over. Didn't get his body weight across him, but caught him, clotheslining him across the face and the throat, but it was not enough, and big flying double knees from Vong Vertigo. Fight or flight, they can pull it out here. Now. That was three, says one of the fans, and I agree that could very well have been three, but referee Nick Wilde says it's only two, and this match will continue. Oh, out of the way, and a big game on Geary from the corner, fight or flight, double team action now. Now, come on, there's two of them, but they still can't get Uno over. Spreading them apart, obviously gonna go for the tag, and he does. Trying to isolate Fuerza, I've seen this before. Gonna be a crazy face first blockbuster, basically a flipping ace crusher, brutal stuff. No, Mexican arm drag, Fuerza showing his heritage there and his intelligence. Wow, huge head scissor out of the corner and look at the pain on the face. Oh, Stu Grayson, Stupe Suicida from Vertigo and finally fight or fight are exactly where they wanna be. Now two count center of the ring, come on. Don't stop now, Fuerza, get on top of him. Vertigo saying the same thing, let's do this. They got something in mind here. Turning him around, could be assisted kill switch. I think a little uh, miscommunication there and looks like it's gonna cost him double Pele from Stu Grayson. Wow, all of this action has come to a very quick standstill. Grayson taking out both members of Fight or Flight, and now Uno's the one in the corner begging for a tag. <laughs> Referee Nick Wilde at a four count here. Lucha Toronto, chapter one, and what a chapter it is. Way to start what's hopefully gonna be a legacy, folks. The Super Smash Brothers and Fight or Flight are putting it all on the line here. Vertigo trying to set him up. Far corner takes out Uno, oh, backstabber. Benadriller of sorts. And I think a little bit more miscommunication, but still. No, see, that German suplex, if done correctly, could have been the end of the Super Smash Brothers, but evil Uno right there. Fight or flight, an impressive team, but perhaps showing their inexperience in comparison to the Smash Brothers here in this match today. Yes, SB. Oh, come on, Raph, that's not exactly legal. He's not he didn't even get out of the ring before the tag. Far corner, Fuerza had its scope, though. 
Here he goes. What? Oh. Brutal straight fist. Now in the corner. Oh, wham. Huge running splash. And again. Now the tag. No, Flair's out of the way that time, but still. Oh. Oh, oh. Javelin style shoulder block in the corner and a jumping knee. Flair's has no idea where he's at. Here we go. Torture rack position. What's he going to do? Oh, absolutely brutal. Almost broke him in half there. And looking for his partner, maybe. Von Vertigo getting the tag. Up in the corner. Wow, Grayson just posting. Didn't move an inch, and now. Wow, absolutely brutal. I don't know what you call that, folks. But it has taken the win out of Von Vertigo completely. I think he was knocked out. Did you see his head lifted there? I've seen that action before from people, and it is not a good sign. And here we go, assisted ace crusher. Look at this, folks. Absolutely devastating. And it's all over here. It's academic. There you go. A giant kick out there from Von Vertigo. Vertigo just a little too late, though. Wow, and I tell you, I would like to see a rematch of that. Perhaps chapter two. The SSB with an impressive victory here at Lucha Toronto chapter one. Stay tuned folks, we got the stars of House of Glory Wrestling coming up for you. And look at this, showing respect, saying get in the ring. You too, Flares, come on. <laughs> well, there's the official announcement. And there's the official show of respect. Super Smash Brothers in fight or flight. Welcome to chapter one, folks. Lucha Toronto. And I'm sure we're gonna see this matchup again sometime. Lucha lovers, here we go, Trios action, being brought to you by House of Glory Wrestling out of New York. We got the team of Jimmy Blaze, Smiley, and Andy Lee Ray, who's in the ring right there right now, taking on Smooth Blackman, Ken Broadway, and G.H. Flanders, who's in the ring right now, unfortunately. I like Brett. This is like Brett, give me a break. Oh, I see. Americana, first time Elsa Glory's making their way here to Canada. Oh, and making sure to let us know what he thinks. Oh, come on, super kick the Bret Hart shirt. <laughs> there we go, an official tag before the match. It's kind of like, it's like he tagged that guy in. That's what it seems like what happened there. All right, there's our official bell. Smooth Blackman in the ring with Andy Lee Ray, trio section. Nick Wildey is the man in charge. Let's get this going on. We go collar and elbow, center of the ring. And Smooth Blackman. Clean break there from Blackman. I don't think any of these guys are veterans in the ring at the moment. I've seen Smiley compete a few times. He is extremely impressive, so if any of these other House of Glory athletes are even half as good as him, we are gonna be in for one hell of a trios matchup. And there, Blackman taking a swipe at Smiley. Another collar and elbow center of the ring, starting off slow. 
These two guys look like they might be the powerhouses of their teams. There we go, Blackman talking some serious trash. What is, throwing, throwing his Pokemon. You throw the Pokeball, not the Pokemon, dude, come on. Andy Lee Ray's gotta get his pop culture references right if he's gonna use them in a combat environment. Oh, there we go, I see. It's just a distraction technique. Side headlock from Andy Lee Ray now. Far side digging in, shoulder block and taking down Blackman. Andy Lee, far side now. Both of these guys, the stockier members of their team. Whoa, nice Mexican style arm drag there. Whoa! And belying that size, Andy Lee Ray. Big cartwheel style drop kick center of the ring and I'm certainly impressed with this kid. Grabbing the head, where the head goes, the body will follow. Put him into the right corner, that's for sure, and a tag to Jimmy Blaze. No, and Blackman, maybe showing the inexperience there. Andy Lee taking his hands off his opponent, turning his back, and smooth Blackman all the way into the corner with a tag to Ken Broadway. Broadway, the tallest man in this match. It certainly doesn't look like he misses any gym time, that's for sure. Oh, give me a break, much better. I mean, technically, I guess each dollar is worth a little more. But not much. This guy thinks he's freaking Ted DiBiase. He's got the green tights. He's handing out money left, right, and center. Oh, he's got cash flow written on his tights, so this is obviously his shtick. And Jimmy Blaze is going to say, all right, I'll put that in my tights. Oh, I see he's paying him off for a win. He's saying, I don't want to compete. Uh, see, that was not a proper, uh, that was not a proper lateral press, or Blaze would not have been able to get out so easy. And now testing the water here with some chops. Come on, Blaze, you're going to have to dig in a little harder than that. That's what I'm talking about, kid. Oh, okay, it looked like, it was like a block, and he raked him in the eyes there, poked him in the eye, that was good. Ken Broadway, magical hands faster than the eye can see. Especially when he's poking you in the eye. There we go, Bunter Ross in the corner, and uh, Jimmy plays blocking, just calls in Smiley. I don't think there was no real legal tag there, but this is trios action. So if you are aware of the Lucha Libre rules, folks, there is no need for a legal tag. And Smiley, fully aware of that, obviously baiting in Flanders, ducking under. Whoa! Surprises him, taking off the mask and revealing the green mask. Wow, see, I told you I have seen Smiley in the past that he is certainly impressive. When you look at him into the ring, you don't think that he's gonna be the guy flying around there more than anybody else, but believe me, this kid can fly, and impressively so. And G.H. Flanders, there we go, trying to show that he can do it too. Big double chop there, almost a yeah, Mongolian chop, but no. Ah, see, I saw this last time I saw Smiley. Guys, arm drag, twisted style, and finally getting Flanders over. He might have really wrenched his shoulder there. Landing firmly on his tailbone, where he has that uh, cash flow money stuffed in his tights still. It's nice when your partner's handing you money in the middle of the match, that's good stuff. I gotta team up with this Ken Broadway sometime. Nice slow bridge, Smiley. Obviously, if you know this guy, that's gonna mean he's gonna fly for sure. Oh no, helping out Jimmy Blaze. Tope Suicida, forearms all around for the Rudos team. And the fans screaming for more. Lucha Lucha, the firmly behind our Technicos Trios team. And Jimmy Blaze out there with all three guys though, that's not smart. Andy Lee Ray though, looks like he's gonna fly. Oh no. <laughs> okay, a little bit of miscommunication or a slight slip up there, but Smiley gonna take advantage. Tope Kanilo right over the top, taking out his own teammates, but taking out everybody it seems. And here's this young lady coming to the, the aid of Smooth Blackman. I think she might be his lady, I'm not sure, but she is with our Rudos and she better watch herself out there. No, firm distraction technique. 
and Smiley falling for it for sure. GH Flanders now all over the insane high fly luchador. Wow, face first right into the ring apron. He's lucky he didn't get a head full of steel posts there. And Andy Lee Ray still caught up on the ropes there. Flanders trying for the schoolboy pin, picking him up and just face first pancaking him into the canvas. Rolling him over now. Free healthcare chance starting. And Flanders says, yeah, here's your healthcare. I'll give you a sharpshooter. More ridiculous Bret Hart action here. How come everybody in the States thinks that we're completely obsessed with Wayne Gretzky and Bret Hart? I mean, they're both great guys, but it's not like I think about them every single day when I'm alone all the time. And there we go. Come on, ref, whoever this young lady is, she is pounded away on Andy Lee Ray's side, side of the ring. Wow, a couple elbows there too. Flanders faking a tag, totally unnecessary in trios rules, but still. There we go, I thought uh, Broadway was gonna put on Smiley's mask there for a minute, that would've been interesting. But there we go, Ric Flair elbow drop to the Smiley mask. And now just throwing it out in the audience, no respect for Smiley or his accoutrement and ring gear. Digging in with the chop in the corner, Andy Lee Ray, since being stuck and hung up on those uh, on the top rope there, has been in some serious trouble. Here we go. Wow. Ric Flair, DX, everything. Doing the, the Ted DiBiase money gimmick. This kid, Broadway, likes to cover all of his bases. I'm not sure if I like it or if I hate it, but he's certainly getting the job done here. And now Smooth Blackman make a wish. Andy Lee Ray certainly not appreciating that one. He's wishing that he was out of the ring. That's what he's wishing. Wow, showing the strength. Center of the ring, Blackman. Wow, then here we go, some Chris Jericho action. These Rudos, they certainly, like I said, they like to cover all their bases. And a good, strong Canada chant starting here. That's what happens when you imitate Chris Jericho. Wow, G.H. Flanders doesn't know what he's gonna do. Finally decides and then tags out again. <laughs> Actually, I think I kinda like this guy. They're yeah, wrestling, reverse chin lock here. Pressing down on Andy Lee Ray, who's obviously sucking wind. Been in there way too long, and Broadway gonna try and wear him down. Oh, whoa. Look at the slack jaw action that was happening there with Andy Lee Ray. He could very well be going out here. No, no, fighting out. The energy of the fans bringing him back to life. Couple shots to the gut here, big kick. Far side, no, ducking under. Ow. Big twisting power slam, center of the ring. And now trying to get the fans behind him. Andy Lee Ray's gotta get to the corner. Gonna tag Smooth Blackman in. And here comes Smiley. Wow, big flying axe handle. Runs right into an E and Smiley, he's gonna take you out, guys. Here comes Flanders. Wow, and he takes a clothesline, puts him right down, hopping back up and takes a roundhouse kick right to the head. Smiley grabbing the head. Standing contra code, sheer new, call it what you want. I call it a victory here. Broadway, breaking it up. What's he gonna do? Slamming him down, sit out power slam there. Taking his time to get in the pin position and Jimmy Blaze is gonna make him pay for it. Wow, nice combination from Blaze. High back body drop. Blackman though, in the ring. Wow, final cut, center of the ring. Oh, I am. 
Tiny Lee Ray finally has gotten some win back and big release German suplex on the massive smooth black man. Wow, but runs right into a big boot from Flanders. Oh, look at Smiley, what's he up to? Tied him in nuts. Ah, down with this power bomb. Almost a Tiger Driver style or a Liger bomb. But tied him up like a pretzel beforehand. That was some impressive stuff here. And Smiley looking good for control. No rake in the eyes through the mask. G.H. Flanders, a kick right to the hip. That can't feel good. Kicking out the other members of the Technicals team. He has something in mind, obviously. Looks like he's calling for Broadway. This has been a great match so far. But our Rudos here representing House of Glory set him up in the corner, but no, here we go. Tower of Doom, perhaps these guys should have been aware. No, Smiley, wow! Oh! Double Doomsday device and Smiley flapjacking it right straight down. Come on, get him over. No, not going for the pin, going to the top. Okay, Jimmy Blaze saying no, yeah. And now Smooth Blackman too. Getting all of them there. Smiley checking the distance. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Springboard in the 450 off the top rope with ease this kid. And it's all over, pinning all three members of the Rudos team. Wow, House of Glory, certainly worth checking out, folks, if this is the kind of action you're gonna see. And we've got some more action coming up. Here we go, folks, back to traditional tag team action here at Chapter 1. Unlike our trios match, you need to make a tag in this one, just like uh, John Greed is demonstrating for us there, hand-to-hand -hand tag. Wonderful. John Greed and his partner, Sebastian Schwab, the Overdogs. We're supposed to get a House of Glory tag team championship match here today. Ooh. But instead, they have run headlong into... Mr. Mark Quinn in the ring right now, who I know very little about, and his tag team partner tonight billing themselves as one night only, because it is one night only, the current, or one half of the current House of Glory tag team champions, Mr. Anthony Gangon, the rogue Anthony Gangon, whose tag team partner, the bad boy, Joey Janela, could uh, not make it here tonight, so he's teaming up with Mark Quinn here in the ring, and uh, Quinn is not, uh, sorry, John Greed is not sweating Mark Quinn here at all. Oh! No, try to fake out there into a drop kick. Now a second one. John Green just absorbing those. And uh Okay, here we go. John Greed looks just about as confused as everybody else here. And a big kick to the gut, Mark Quinn outside. Anthony Gargan gone. This guy is extremely dangerous. Yeah, see, John Greed, he's been drinking all day long. Pretty jovial for a guy who's lost an opportunity at a, a well-recognized tag team championship, that's for sure. But he doesn't give a heck at all. He's just here to have a party. But Anthony Gangon. Yeah, serious contest is right. Gangon is nobody to take lightly. One half of the tag champs, but a guy who will take you out in a heartbeat. I have seen this guy in the ring before. He's extremely dangerous. <laughs> and Mark Quinn here. He's extremely something. I don't know if it's dangerous, but uh, 
over there with the ladies, but not getting too far with them, and not getting too far with John Greed here. Another big kick to the gut. Greed's had enough, saying, you want some of this, Swab? Wow, nice. Big knee right into the kidney area there. Sebastian Suave, no slouch in the ring, all the way back to the days of BSE, Squared Circle Live. This guy's been around with this company all the way from the beginning, and now here with the Overdogs, showing up for Lucha Toronto Chapter One. Wow, far corner, Quinn. Northern Lights suplex, and it could be over here. No, again, gone on the outside. Didn't look like he was sweating that too much. Obviously knows who he's teaming up with here with Quinn. Knows uh, exactly how much damage he thinks he can take. And a handshake tag. I like that from the Overdogs. That was good. Double team action. I don't see the ref with a five count. Ah, oh, and chopping him right down. Assisted suplex. And although we started the night with uh, Nick Lockhart in there with some of the local boys, this is technically the first House of Glory versus Lucha Toronto match here. It was supposed to be for the tag titles, but the Overdogs taking on one night only. And so far, uh, maybe our referee a little lax there. I would have liked to have seen the five count there on the, uh, on the double team, but Gangon giving some advice here to his partner. Does not want to come out on the losing end his first time here in Toronto. Wow, and choking out. John Greed, this was gonna be the first time ever a House of Glory championship was defended on Canadian soil, the tag titles, but that honor now is gonna go later on this evening to the House of Glory heavyweight championship as Brian XL takes on former tag champion here, Lewis Linden, that's gonna be great, but current House of Glory tag team champion Anthony Gangon in the ring now, trying to use his uh, diminutive body weight to press down with the reverse chin lock here on John Greed, who he's just gonna stand right up. Greed's got too much power for this. But obviously feeling it, reaching out to Sebastian, trying to get that tag. Big open-handed bear claw paws right to the stomach of Gangon and just shrugging him off, no problem. But still feeling the effects of that reverse headlock. And now Quinn jumping on like a flea there, clamping down. Oh, and Green, he's having none of it here. Standing up straight. Oh, Gangon! In with the shoulder block, sorry, with the chalk block to the knee. I told you this guy was a devious competitor, knows exactly what he's doing in the ring. There's a reason he's one half of the tag champions over there at House of Glory. And Mark Quinn now has gone from getting stood up on and John Greed shrugging it off to seriously putting a hurt on the big man. Now oh, Greed again to his feet. And prepping Quinn, better brace yourself, kid. Oh, far corner, and that is a lot of weight to absorb. John Green's a couple of pounds shy having his own gravitational pull, folks. Wow, and just beating him down with the elbows, elbow after elbow after elbow. Chris Hero would be proud. Tag to Suave. Another double chop, one of the favorites of Sebastian Suave. Third time we've seen that in this match. Open-handed, overhand style chop in the corner. Quinn showing the speed. Pretty much the only thing that this kid has shown this match has been speed. Wow, he has been outclassed at every turn by the Overdogs. And Gangon in again. Big kitchen sink. And for some reason, Gangon seems to have the number of the Overdogs. Every time he's in there, he seems to have the advantage. It's like the opposite of his partner. There we go again, right to the mush of Suave. Powering him outside the ring. <laughs> and breaking the back of Sebastian Suave, Mark Quinn. Gangon gone feeling that clothesline. I didn't see how he landed, probably not too smoothly. And Kevin Nash styles in the corner with the boot. Mark Quinn, far side, reversal by Suave. Overdogs are here to have a party today, but one night only, quote unquote, should not be taking these guys too uh, lightly. Sebastian Suave showing his skill submission move here, but he's in the ropes, he won't get a pin, and gang gone with a boot right to the face. And now back first against the apron. It is the hardest part of that structure, folks, with the exception of going right straight into the steel posts. And now gone, again, gone, beaten down on that back. Sending him back into the ring to Mark Quinn. 
two count there. And here comes to the tag to the veteran of the team. Back of the head and now again with the elbow. Suave trying to make some distance. And wow, Gangon just mauling him. Forms and kicks. The elbow right to the sternum and rib area there. Bit of a brawler this Gangon. But before you know it, he'll pull out a submission move. He'll be flying around the ring. This guy, an all-around competitor. Wrestling acumen, high flying skill, and as we have seen in this match for darn sure, one heck of a brawler. Wow, step up Insiguri using his partner instead of the knee. And now choking out Sebastian Suave. Come on, there's the ref on top of him. The overdogs in a serious situation here. Snapmare center of the ring and Mark Quinn. Oh, another distraction bait and switch with a drop kick to Greed. That happened earlier in the match and Greed got it right in the mush. And it's happened here again, slowly getting to his speed and Mark Quinn center of the ring back to a side headlock. I'm not sure if this is the, the technique you want to use on Sebastian Suave. Lifting him up and big back body drop. I would get all over him and Gan gone, he has that idea. Knows a few seconds is all it'll take for him to get over there to John Greed. And one night only wants to take home a win down to New York. House of Glory versus Lucha Toronto. It's chapter one here, folks, for us. Hopefully we'll be back for chapter two if this is all gonna work out, but we do not wanna go down. Oh, nice combination move there. We do not wanna go down to these Americans. Foot on the rope there for Suave. One night only though in firm control right now. Big knife edge chop almost to the throat and yeah, Swab giving him a receipt. Kick to the gut and it's some more brawling action from these guys. Wow, Gangon followed him in with the lifter and Swab obviously feeling the effects of that one. He must have hit him really solid. And it looks like a double team maneuver here. Wall power bombing his partner. No, I look that I wouldn't do that to my partner. Quinn barely able to follow up, hit the back of his head on the canvas there. Two counts. Obviously wanted to hit that maneuver a little higher up on his shoulders. Would have got a better torque and more uh, more velocity as well, but didn't work out the way he wanted. Choking out Suave, and now I thought he was going to go for a tag. But no, just abusing Sebastian Suave. There's that tag. I don't know if I consider a tag to the back to be completely legal, but referee Nick Wilde gonna let it stand. Headbutt to the rib area. And now setting him up. Shit talking greed as well. Sebastian Suave trying to block a little too much weight. Suave, a very uh, low center of gravity, so that's gonna work out to his advantage here and easily reversing the suplex once he got his footing. Gang gone. Gonna, is he gonna crawl back out and tag to Quinn again? A lot of tags in this match. Back and forth between one night only. And Sebastian Suave finally getting that long needed tag. And it's back to John Greed and Mark Quinn, center of the ring. Greed using that superior size and body weight to his advantage again. And Flapjack and the young man right into a flat ladder. Oh my lord. <laughs> Trying to get the fans behind him, but seriously, it could be all over here. Quinn, he has no idea where he is. And Gangon sliding into the ring. Greed sees him though. Big reverse elbow. Gangon barely to his feet. Whoa! Nice rolling set on there from Suave. Greed just running over Quinn in the ring. And the overdogs are these guys exactly where they want them. Throwing Quinn all outside the ring, I thought, but no, he knew what he was doing. Right into the boot of Sebastian Suave. <laughs> Windmilling him, pancaking him face first with a gut wrench. 
Wow, and Quinn showing the toughness there. Getting out at two. Tag to Sebastian Suave. The overdogs looking to put away one night only here. Mark Quinn, this cannot be good for the youngster. Wow, big in the corner. And a second one, Avalanche. Suave scoops him up with a slam. Running Centon from Greed. And that's four or five big maneuvers in a row, taking the wind out of Quinn. But when you take the ref out of the ring, it doesn't matter. Wow, Wildy. Very upset with Anthony Gangon. I'm surprised he doesn't disqualify him there, but I think he's looking just like us. He wants to see a winner in this match, whether it's the USA or Canada, but John Green not showing the same kind of patience and getting a rake to the eye for his troubles. And oh, wow. Yeah, look at that Macho Man Styles knee to the back. And John Green has been splayed out here head first into the ring post. Oh, wow. Was that three? I thought that was three. Suave taking a big knee. And now one night only in control. Look at this. Assistant DDT. It's got to be all over here for Suave. Now oh, Quinn took too long. And John Greed, who I'm surprised had any clue where he was after taking a face full of ring post, breaks up that pin. And one night only kicking the big man out of the ring. That's what I do. Get him out of here and try and administer another double team to Suave and get the victory. Quinn, what's he doing outside the ring? Certainly not taking my advice, but Anthony Gangon seems to think he knows what he can do here. Again, that low center of gravity coming to the advantage of Sebastian Suave on a super kick side of the head. Gangon, brain buster. Where it's got to be over here. What? What? I am as shocked as Anthony Gangon. Sebastian Suave. That was a serious brain buster. And John Creed is nowhere to be found. Whatever they're planning here, it's got to be over for Suave if they get this. Come on. Three massive maneuvers in a row if this hits. No, out of the way. Hardy Boy style combination, leg drop and splash. Suave, after all of that damage, I'm surprised he was compass mentis enough to be able to get out of the way of that one. Legal tag to John Green. Fireman's carry position and gang gone. Looks like he'll be getting a fall away if things work out the way Green has it planned. Here we go. Whoa. Wow, and Mark Quinn came out on the losing end of that one. Believe me, folks. Look at his face. He's sucking wind. He got absolutely crushed by John Green. This has been an impressive match, and I got to give it to one night only. Mark Quinn, Anthony Gangon, I believe never tagged together before as far as my knowledge. So serious hats off to these guys, but it looks like Big running cross slam, and a frog splash from the big man! It's all over, my God! You got greed, you can count to 100. He's right. And it's sad to imagine this could have been a tag team title victory for the overdogs but still very proud of my boys. Make sure you get it clear, buddy. Mouthful there from Green. The locker room better watch out for the Overdogs. And we'll be back, folks. A very special exhibition match coming up next. Lucha Libre action. Don't go anywhere.
right, folks. Well, the fans seem to be happy that we're going to be getting a hardcore match here. But I got to tell you, this makes me sick. We were supposed to have an exhibition. Oh, and this man, Josh Taylor, Josh One Take Taylor, has ruined what was supposed to be a very beautiful and nostalgic moment here in the ring. Sombra Canadiens, a man known as Sombra, and his tag team partner, Angel de Guerra, for years back in BSE, known as the Revoluchas, part of the Mexican heritage of this company. Oh, and many, many Lucha Libre stars that they have brought here to Canada. This was supposed to be an exhibition match between ex-partners, putting on a show here for folks. Sombra's been retired for about four or five years now. He is here agenting matches for us here tonight. Oh yeah, well, obviously still has it going on. Josh Taylor came out, attacked Angel de Guerra. Taylor himself has wrestled for Squared Circle and BSE for years, was upset that he was not invited here. Ah! And Sombra says, you want to attack my partner? Fine, you son of a bitch. Let's go, you and me, the history hardcore match right now. Oh, and Sombra showing that he hasn't missed a step in his four or five years of retirement. Look at that. Sporting a Mass Republic shirt. Our good friends over at Mass Republic. Shout out to Kevin Kleinrock. And let me tell you, Sombra, I'm looking forward to him kicking the shit out of Josh Taylor here. It's hardcore lucha action, and our exhibition match has turned into anything but. Sizing him up. Ah, boot to the face. Josh Taylor, this has certainly turned around on him, crawling around on all fours here at the Royal Canadian Legion. Fans better watch themselves. Oh, Josh Taylor, one take is right. Hopefully this is the only time we ever see him here. He's gonna get taught a lesson by Sombra. All right, the fans firmly behind the Toronto Lucha legend. Coming out of retirement, this was supposed to be his last match ever. Him and Angel de Guerra exhibition, and I am really excited now. My disappointment has turned rather fervent because I am excited to see Josh Taylor get his ass kicked in this hardcore match. Sombra didn't waste a heartbeat saying, you want to go at it? Fine, let's go, hardcore Lucha making the challenge. Hopefully Angel de Guerra is getting some medical attention backstage. Josh Taylor really did a number on that guy and then dumped him out here in front of the audience. Total disrespect. Oh, wow, there's glassware on that bar. You better be careful. Ah, oh, total disrespect. Josh Taylor treating Sombra like trash. I'm saying, take a look at this. Beautiful face. This guy has always been full of himself. I haven't seen him in years and years, but nothing has changed. And I gotta tell you, nothing has changed with his physique either. Josh Taylor looking absolutely fabulous. Look, looking like he hasn't missed a day out of the ring. I don't know where he's been competing. Oh, big close fist blow. You can hear that right to the side of the head of Sombra. Sombra doesn't even look like all of his gear has been uh, tightened up and put on securely. He was looking to have a little bit of fun flipping and flying exhibition match against his ex-partner. I don't think he was looking to come out with any bumps or major bruises in this match. There's certainly no close fist blows to the face, but things have changed very quickly. And Hardcore Lucha, oh, face first, right into the pole, Sombra. Here's the old BSE ring apron. Josh Taylor, I don't know what he's looking for underneath the ring, but it can't be good. Steel chair. Use the chair, the fans telling him to use the chair. What do you think he's gonna do? Look, he's not using the chair now, probably just because they told him to. Obviously, nobody knows Josh Taylor very well around here. Underneath the ring, I mean, what, what else has he found? Looks like he's found something interesting, maybe better than a chair. No, okay, another chair for a kid at ringside. What's that, his boy? Josh Taylor certainly gets around. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't have a whole bunch of kids. Half of them probably doesn't even know about. All right, broom action. Nah, no, see what I mean? That's exactly like this guy. Swiffer. Josh Taylor, obviously trying to get a, a bit of his win back, a bit of a methodical pace here. Took a bit of a hell of a beating in the first few moments of this match. Oh, right to the gut. Ah, and dig it in with the chair. Our first blow here with a foreign object. Let's get another look at that. Absolutely brutal. 
Here we go. And wham, Sombra. Four or five years out of the ring, and here he is taking chair shots. And Josh Woods, what's he up to here? He set up some chairs, obviously up to no good. Wow, Sombra may regret at this moment challenging Woods to a hardcore match. Whatever's gonna happen here cannot be good. Suplex position, Sombra no blocking it. Shots to the side, rib area. Oh, and a knee to the ribs. Softening it up for that. Fireman's carry position, Sombra, I'm surprised he can see at the moment. And Woods taking advantage, peppering him with those elbows. Oh, super kick, my God. Taylor setting him up. Oh! Huge running STO sweeping the leg there and Sombra has barely missed a step in his time away from the ring. I'm seriously impressed. And Josh Taylor, look, he's just waking up. He's like, what happened? A semi trek just went right through you, pal. That's what happened. Sombra now trying to get the fans behind him. Josh Taylor though, that steel chair is right there at his fingertips. I would not be surprised if he comes to a standing position with it in hand. No. Throwing fists, center of the ring now, these guys. Oh, wow. Now, flipper forearms. Three, four of them in a the row. Sombra about Woods. Oh, nice overhead throw there from Sombra. Two count only. Hardcore Lucha here. There we go, he heard me. Grab that chair, Sombra. Oh, kick to the gut. And a Famouser right straight down. Rocker dropper onto that chair. Could be all over. One, two, now. Woods complaining to the ref. I am surprised at the toughness of Sombra in the corner now. Out of the way, no! Woods face first into that chair that was set up there earlier. I didn't even see that, and now sit out slam right onto another chair. Could be all over here. No! Josh, one take. Taylor showing us his toughness. This guy is arrogant. He's got an attitude, but a lot of it is well-founded, folks. This guy has some impressive victories under his belt over the years, and he has proven more than once that he is one tough son of a bitch. But a son of a bitch, he is in here ruining this exhibition match, and I sure hope he gets what for and learns a lesson and gets it from Sombra. Underneath the super kick. No, Sombra, Tiger Driver here, no! Wow, the action, fast and furious after all this hardcore, still off. Oh. It's over for Josh Taylor. and one heck of a final match for Sombra. Coming out of retirement to put on a treat for these folks, and one heck of a treat it was. Gee, what's this? What the? I don't know, I think I, I, think I know who this is. That looks like the Mighty Barricade, but I've never seen him wear a mask before, this is crazy. In the ring, obviously here at Lucha Libre to make an impression on people. A barricade, this is very unlike him. Usually a very jovial individual, always has fun with the fans and look, attacking El Sombra here. Absolutely brutal, I don't know, is, is this barricade? I mean, I don't. I don't really know. Well, it sure sounds like Barricade. Oh, brutalizing Sombra. Two 
his feet now. What is going on here? Somebody's gotta come down to the ring. Sombra's not ready for this, come on. He's been retired for years, just went through a hardcore match which he was certainly not prepared for, and now this, who I believe is the Mighty Barricade, squeezing the life out of Sombra, come on. No, this can't be Barricade. It's gotta be somebody else, but somebody is obviously influencing this guy. Wildy, come on, don't just ask him to break. Do something, man. There's gotta be some more refs around here. Finally letting go Barricade. If it is Barricade, I am thoroughly disappointed in the behavior of this man, but I do not know what's going on underneath that brand new mask. But the mighty Barricade has made his presence known here at Lucha Toronto. Yeah, go get out of here. Get this guy out of here. And somebody, let's get some help for Sombra. Give me a break. Look at this guy. Might have broken his arm there. Who knows if he's got a broken rib or whatnot. After that, Barricade may have just very well ended the career for darn sure of Sombra. He might not even ever be able to do an exhibition match or anything again. Give me a break. Lucha lovers, there's our official bell, part of our double main event here. There it is for the first time ever, the House of Glory Heavyweight Championship being defended on Canadian soil. And it's Brian XL right there showing some disrespect to Lewis Linden. Big close fist blow right to the mush. And now choking him out. Mr. 70s Kung Fu, former tag team champion, two time, one of the only two time tag team champions ever. Lewis Linden here, always loved by the management at Squared Circle, and now at Lucha Toronto, chapter one. Looking to make a serious impact here. Whoa. Both men looking to duck under. They're lucky they didn't hit heads. That would have been a real slowdown to this match. Huracan Rana, head scissor takeover from Linden. This guy's quick as a hiccup. Big drop kick right to the gro uh, basically the groin and the hip area. And believe me, folks, that hurts getting hit in the side of the hip. That'll end your career or certainly start chipping away at how many years of your career you have left are those hip and lower back injuries, believe me. And Lewis Linden looking to fly here. Far side. Oh no. And Sonya Strong. She came to ringside with Brian XL and already. Just a few moments into this match, making her presence known. And of course, Zoe very pleased with herself, I'm sure. A serious in-ring competitor in her own right. Yeah, I would be careful, gonna choke him out. But she's not gonna be uh, light-handed either if she decides to open hand slap you or heaven forbid, give you a close fist blow. She hits the gym quite often. She is one strong woman. That is why she's called Sonya Strong. Wow, nice suplex. Making it look easy there from the House of Glory heavyweight champion. Nice helo. Gonna roll Linden into the center. That's not gonna be enough though. No way, Linden, one heck of a tough son of a bitch. I have seen this guy in the ring many, many times. No, believe me, we don't love you either, buddy. There, waste your time and you get a headbutt to the gut. But uh, Brian XL channeling a little Lewis Linden there. Big roundhouse kick right to the chest and Linden sucking air. Face first right into the turnbuckle. And look at that. 
making fun of the fans here, saying, I'm gonna break you. Wasting time, in my opinion. These good fans don't deserve that either, supporting us here at Lucha Toronto, making this thing a reality, believe me, bringing you something different, and hopefully going to be continuing to bring you some incredible Lucha Libre stars. The history of Squared Circle Wrestling, of BSE Pro, these guys have brought in Lucha Libre stars from Mexico for years and years and years, and we are going to be focusing on that in the future, bringing you some great wrestling action. But right now, in the ring, great wrestling action, Brian Excel hasn't exactly been showing us too much wrestling. It's been nothing but brawling, Close fist and smashing Lewis Linden's head into the side turnbuckle. Shoving off Brian XL. Ah, nice. Espado Pontius. Pinning combination. Doesn't get the three, though, and I don't expect him to. Brian Excel, you're gonna have to work this guy over for a long time. He is one tough competitor in the ring, and it's moves like that, duck under, and a running forearm that are gonna get you in the position you want. Lewis Linden showing the speed. Ricky Steamboat style there with the double chops. And again. Yeah, the fans firmly behind Mr. 70s Kung Fu. In behind now, trying for the German suplex. Linden, certainly a powerhouse when you least expect it. He's no stranger to the gym. But also, look at this action. Quick as a cat and a jumping knee. Brian Excel doesn't know where he is. Duck in the roundhouse and follows it up. Windmill style, Brian Excel. You gotta get up pretty early in the morning to be faster than Lewis Linden, believe me. Crawling out of the ring, and that is not the place you wanna be with Mr. 70's Kung Fu. Springboard, triangle style, and oh, oh! No, Sonya Strong! Taken out here by Lewis Linden, and that did not look good. Yeah, look, she is seriously hurting. Referee checking on her, she says she's okay, but Linden hit her flush, and let's see another look at that here. Wham! Her elbow jabbed her right in the stomach there. Came down on her shoulder with his knees, too. Certainly not a pleasant experience for Sonya Strong. And the fans here calling Brian Excel a coward for getting out of the way. I don't know if he pushed her in the way, but I would not put that past Brian Excel. You should be ashamed of yourself. Ah, see, fan must have pushed her. Fan saying he should be ashamed of himself. Wow, look at that athleticism from Brian Excel. Fireman's carry position, what's he gonna do? Right into the double knees, brutalizing the rib area. With that flying crossbody before and now that, obviously Brian XL trying to soften up Lewis Linden for his exclamation point finisher. And look, wham, another look at that double knees. Lewis Linden able to get out with a two count there. Yeah, see, two, saying two. That is correct, my friend, only two. You gotta do a lot more than that to a former Royal Canadian Tag Team Champion if you wanna get the free count. And Linden showing that toughness right now, trying to get to his feet. Brian Excel in, though, like a vulture. No reversal there, Linden showing, oh, I was gonna say, showing the toll this match is taken, but still a consummate competitor up to the top rope, no! Using it for extra leverage, big side roundhouse kick to the face, and Brian Excel crawling around. What's gonna happen here? Rolling through, wow, German, a nice bridge, one, two! No, come on! Sonya Strong getting involved again. Obviously, this young lady has no qualms about getting involved in the match, whether she's taking moonsault triangle style from Lewis Linden or attacking people, pulling out the ring. And now, ah, I was gonna say, getting what she deserves, but a big slap to Linden. That's just gonna piss him off, honey. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! <laughs> I don't feel bad this time. No, Excel though, trying to capitalize. No, 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 come on, holding the ropes. The first time the title's ever defended in Canada and that's how he's gonna come out with the win. Might as well put that strap around the waist of Sonya Strong too, give me a break. Wow, 
Wow, and I was expecting a much longer match. I can tell you Lewis Linden had a lot more gas in the tank, but Brian Excel using underhanded tactics, looking to get out of Dodge as quick as he can with his gold. He certainly doesn't want to go back to New York with a lighter suitcase, believe me, and taking the cheap way out to get the victory too. Shameful, absolutely shameful. Now checking on Strong. I don't give a hell, I hope she's hurt. Give me a break. All right, folks, main event time. Here we go. Amazing Red from House of Glory taking on Puerto Rico Lucha Libre sensation, Lince Dorado. If you are not familiar with Dorado, we got one hell of a treat for you here today. This guy really loves to have fun in the ring, but uh, don't let that throw you off guard. He is a dangerous, dangerous competitor. And Amazing Red, former TNA X Division champion, and the patriarch of House of Glory Wrestling is seriously going to have his hands full with this competitor. This is going to be a heck of a main event. And hopefully a little more competitive and, uh, than that last match. Brian XL cheating his way to get out of that match with Lewis Linden and should be extremely ashamed of himself. Hopefully Amazing Red is going to redeem House of Glory here in our main event. All right, official bell. Amazing Red getting ready here, doubling up on the knee pads. This guy's been around for a while. Wear and tear does take its toll on the body, but at the same time, in the same breath, he is seriously a veteran of the industry, especially in high-flying matches like this and against opponents like this. Lindsay Dorado is gonna have to watch out for himself, though Wiley Amazing Red might pull it out. There you go. See, we're gonna see some respect between competitors in this match, unlike with Brian Excel and Sonya Strong and her continuous interference. There are no seconds at ringside here. These two guys are friends. They're serious competitors, and we're gonna see some serious action. In the corner, and probably another clean break we're gonna see, I'm sure. Oh, see, even better, Lince Dorado kind of purring up on him. <laughs> gonna rub that mohawk into the chest. Say, I love you, buddy, but I'm gonna have to kick your ass, unfortunately. There we go. Handshake, center of the ring. Gonna get the fans going. Final match of the evening here, chapter one. It's been one heck of a success. House of Glory invades Hawktown here. Lucha Toronto and our main event. Wow, look at the speed of these guys. And underneath, Dorado. Probably a hair faster than Amazing Red, but Red has made a lot of bread and butter off of that speed for years and years. Here we go, right back to the headlock. Also, a very tenured and educated wrestler as well. Head scissors, Dorado. Amazing Red, look at that. Kip off getting out of that, no problem. He's been there a million times. This is fairly awesome. Maybe perhaps a little premature for uh, this is awesome champ, but I can tell you if you don't think it's awesome yet, uh, it's certainly going to get more and more awesome. And Lince Dorado, I think if he uh, he's gonna need to shirk that jovial attitude if he wants to come out with a win against Amazing Red. I was talking to him backstage. He is very, very focused on getting a win here for House of Glory. Arm ringer, Dorado rolling through. That's the best way to get rid of that pressure, folks. And now drop toe hole, dragging him down. We're gonna see a lot of this kind of action, but Red out with the hammer lock. And now front face lock, Dorado splayed out. Red talking to the fans, trying to get them into it as well as they should be. This is one rare match you might never see again. Lince Dorado and Amazing Red. And a complete standoff here between these guys so far. Another collar and elbow center, and again with the arm ringer. Amazing Red perhaps gonna focus on that arm and shoulder for the match. But look at that, Lindsay Dorado 
Bouncing off the second rope. Flipping around with ease. And it's those kind of moves like that right there, you're gonna have a lot more trouble doing if your arm and your shoulder are hurting. So perhaps Amazing Red with a very wise game plan in this match, but Lindsay Dorado, look at that. Head scissor takeover and flipping back up to his feet like it was nothing. Speaking of flips, monkey flipping. Speaking of landing on your feet, Amazing Red wheelbarrow here. Mexican arm dragon Dorado now. He's gonna have to watch himself. Like I said earlier, Amazing Red been doing this for years and years. You give him an inch, he's gonna take a mile. And Schoolboy roll up here now. Wow, Mahi Straw Cradle. Amazing Red, impressive stuff. Wow, and the referee doesn't even know what's going on here. Trying to tell the ring keeper, sorry, trying to tell the timekeeper two count, turns around, and there's another lateral press happening. This action is unreal. Yes, yes, agree with me, thank you. Lucha Toronto, we gotta thank the booking staff here and the management getting together with House of Glory, making sure that their debut event under this moniker is impressive. And I gotta tell you, it certainly was. And I, yeah, I don't blame Amazing Red for being worried. The claws or paws of uh, Lindsay Toronto, certainly vicious weapons. And uh, there we go, pumping up. Ah, yeah, pump it up again. Here we go. Some vascularity going on, man. Ah, it's not blowing yourself up like the Ultimate Warrior, but it's not what I would be doing in a wrestling match. There we go, another schoolboy. I don't know what he said there, but obviously a smart ass comment from Lindsay Dorado. Certainly a clown in the ring if you give him a chance. But I am looking forward to where they go from here. Going to be one heck of a matchup. Now, finally, Red committing. Test of strength here. Dorado with a little bit of a height advantage, but trying to step in. But Red going to power him over. Now getting in behind. Wow, Bridge going to have to show the next strength here. Both of these guys well-trained years and years. I don't think it's going to be an issue. Dorado. Come on, bud, powering back up. Gotta get that foot moved, move it back to another position. No, no, just powering Red over. Wow, I am impressed with that. Amazing Red, though. There, flat back in, two count, popping back up. Yeah, it's not gonna be long before you run out of stamina in this position. I'd be wanting to get out of there as soon as possible. Spin it around, turn it out, or, or that, that'll do. Oh, wow, look at that, jumping, popping right up. Head scissor, Huracan Rana takeover. Bantaras in the corner, and Dorado, yeah, didn't know that he hit on the apron, thought he had him outside the ring, and amazing red, showing just how amazing he is. Nice cartwheel, single leg drop kick to end it off. And that was certainly impressive, folks. And Dorado heads up, buddy. Tope Suicida. And what a forearm, my God. Amazing Red went absolutely flying. Let's take another quick look at that here. Wow, look at the speed. Unbelievable. Back to live action here. Amazing Red showing a bit of the toll that maneuver took, but that's what it takes to come out on top, to be a long-term competitor, to be taken seriously in the realm of independent professional wrestling. And these two guys, this match is certainly gonna go on in the annals. People are gonna hear what happened at Lucha Toronto at chapter one when Hog invaded Hogtown. Quick as a hiccup, top rope. Wow, big front drop kick and a kip up to boot. Amazing Red in firm control over the younger Lindsay Dorado. Cats always land on their feet, huh? Well, the feline phenom that is Lindsay Dorado certainly does land on his feet quite often. But when you're in there against Amazing Red, you got to cut the guy a little slack. Come on. Wow, center of the ring. Red now down with the elbow. Almost like a Muda style elbow. Could have used a little, little more speed there in my opinion. 
taking his time. And this is shows the, what point in his career Amazing Red is at. There's a time, you go back seven, eight years, you would never see him taking kind of rest spots like this. Uh, being this methodical, his speed, his size, the fact that he can hit you 10 times in under a second, that's what made him so dangerous. Now, training students, being in the ring for years, running his own promotion, he slowed down, he cares more about his body, his family, oh, 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 really, really measuring it there. And there you go, hurting his hand. He does this every single night, folks, and now he's at the point where he can take control of a match, utilize that speed in bursts, and take opponents down without having to go 100%, 100% of the time. And Lince Dorado here, there we go, spun around, more knife edge chops, these guys, look at this. They're gonna go home black and blue. Here we go, far side, Dorado, nice! Springboard into the stunner, and jump up in Sagiri, wow! Far corner, red. No, still has enough awareness. Bunta Ross, but windmilling. And face first, chest first into the turnbuckle. And quick like a cat, I guess. Lindsay Dorado up to the top with the cross body. I don't think this is going to be enough, though, no. That certainly was a surprise to Red, though. And look at that. A guy as fast as Red windmilling punches left and right and got a spin kick to the face for his trouble. And now he's in no man's land. Lindsay Dorado is sure to fly here, folks. Here we go. Tope Cardiolo. No, Tope Amico. Face first with both hands and knocking down Amazing Red. And for the second time, the action has spilled out to our front row fans here. Referee Nick Wilde placing the count on Amazing Red, and I'm surprised Lindsay Dorado waiting for his opponent. Oh, I see, he was measuring him. He was taking his time to set him up for this. Nice, acai moonsault, wow. I don't know if that broke the count or not. If not, these guys had better get back in the ring quicker. It's gonna be all over here. And here we go, another look at that moonsault. Impressive stuff from Lindsay Dorado. Four. Four count here from the ref. Five. Nice and steady pace. Six. Good to see he's giving these competitors a chance to get back in the ring and finish this match the right way. Oh, steel chair now. Okay, good, just to uh, assist himself. I would have been surprised to see that. Could have been a disqualification too. Nice helo from Lince Dorado. Could have been enough, but no. Pretty close to the ropes there too. I'd be surprised if Amazing Red wasn't aware of exactly where he was, would have grabbed the ropes. And the fans, Lince Dorado trying to get everybody into this one. You'd be amazed how much that energy can really fuel a match and more knife edge chops in the corner, setting them up for something. What's gonna happen here, folks? Flying in the corner, but nobody home. Once again, very cat-like landing on his feet, Dorado, but turns around into a forearm, and now they're in the center of the ring, throwing forearms again. These guys, big lifter from Amazing Red. Wow, more forearms back and forth. Red going for the kick, Dorado saw it coming and an open-handed palm strike right to the chest, brutal stuff. That's gonna leave a mark, but Red and Dorado, they've got each other pegged. They know exactly what's going on. Look at that, though. And now they're turning up the speed again, but turning him inside out. Both guys splayed out here. Referee gonna start a double 10 count. Wow, the bursts of speed and action in this match are extremely impressive. Amazing Red, an American competitor here, representing his country, taking on Puerto Rican sensation, Lince Dorado. It's Hog versus Lucha Tio, and man, are we ever bringing you one hell of a main event here, folks. I am seriously glued. Both men. Yeah. 
exchanging shots, center of the ring again. Big forearm, Amazing Red's taken about three dozen of those in this match. Another big chop, probably three dozen of those too. Back and forth. Something's gotta give sometime soon. This match is probably already twice as long as the Brian Excel match. Nobody cheating to get a cheap victory here. These two guys laying it all on the line. They're competitors. They want to build their legacy and or add to it in the case of Amazing Red. And Amazing Red here on Conrad a takeover and quick as a cat. Wow. Oh, sorry, I should be saying that about Lindsay Dorado. Quick as something, not a hiccup. I said that too much, but certainly quick. And Tornado DDT now. Oh, man, I thought it might have been over there. Let's take a look here once again. Look at the speed of Amazing Red. Wham! Unbelievable. Back to live action here, and Red is in firm control now. Believe me, it could be just a matter of time for Lince Dorado. Measuring him, waiting for him to get to his feet. Dorado, better watch himself. Sweet chin perhaps, no missing, second time. The, oh wow, but he got him with the third one. Amazing red, so fast, such a veteran. Breaking out now with a attempted full Nelson, I guess it was gonna be a dragon suplex or something. Flips over, lands on his feet. Oh my god, I can barely keep track of this action and a super kick right to the mush! Springboard! Ah, Rufus! Huron Conrada! And he spikes him head first to the mat! Oh wow! So close there! And Dorado, both of these men completely worn out. Here we go, more replay action. Check out, just spikes Red right on his head. Unbelievable. And I can't believe that he kicked out of that one. The fans firmly behind both of these guys. They're certainly getting their money's worth. Lince Dorado gingerly making his way over to Amazing Red. These guys starting to show the wounds of war. Started off with a lot of fun jokes and games. Oh, digging in deep with the chop. It's getting serious. Big forearm. And returns it. Open-handed slap. Kind of like a Hayukit Styles there, Street Fighter. And still more of those chops to the back and they do not feel good folks, believe me. Wow, crumpling to the canvas, trying to hold on, but one too many forearms, these guys, probably a four or five dozen by now, my God. Amazing Red, taking his time, making sure it counts. Oh, looks like an attempted swanton bomb. In behind though. Wow, trying real hard, look at this! Ah! <laughs> Yoshi Tonic, impressive stuff. I don't know what Lindsay Dorado was trying to do there, but by the end run, Amazing Red got just what he was looking for. And I think he's a little disappointed that that did not put away Lince Dorado. Maybe either disappointed, surprised, impressed with Dorado. Who knows? But certainly wasn't what he wanted. Oh, hey! I don't think this is what anybody wants. What's Brian Excel doing out here? Yeah, seriously. Wildy, get this guy out of here. He's bound to do something. Obviously, a lot of history between Brian Excel and Amazing Red former House of Glory champion, patriarch of the company, and that's the man that represents him. Dorado, this might have already cost Amazing Red though some wasted time, and now trying to get, there we go! Come on, Wieldy, get this guy out of here! Amazing Red, no, and that's what I'm talking about. Giving Dorado time to recover, setting Red up, what's gonna happen here? Could be. Shooting Star Press! 
Oh yeah, and Amazing Red got that flush. Foot on the ropes. No, come on. Hey, hey, Brian Excel. Give me a break. The referee obviously did not see that. Oh, come on, shut up. What the hell are you doing yelling at the man? You just ended up costing him a match. You ruined our previous match, in my opinion, with a cheap victory, and now you ruined our main event. And obviously, there's gonna be a fallout here down at House of Glory between these guys. Yeah, Dorado's like, what's going on? Didn't I win? You did win, pal, but it's not a win you really should be proud of. One heck of a match, one heck of a performance, but because of that man, Brian Excel, I think Lince Dorado's gonna look back at this with a little more disappointment than he should, not the victory that he wanted. All right, but still, one heck of an event here, folks. Don't let one man ruin an incredible evening of wrestling. Lucha Toronto, chapter one, and believe me, it is the first step of many. We're building a legacy here, and you can join us. Look for us online, look for us on Facebook, look for us on Twitter, and make sure you are there, Lucha lovers, because we got a lot more action coming at you. And look, Red, trying to explain the referee what happened. A very unfortunate end here for one heck of a competitor, but we're gonna be back next time, and I can guarantee you, the main event is not gonna go down like this.